What's up, Rujitas? Reverend Dave here. It's been a while. I know. I hate it. But I want to give you a life update, I suppose. Just I've got some downtime in between filming, so I wanted to post something because I know it's been a couple months, So and, and I, I don't like that. So I wanted to give you something and do something fun today because I was cleaning out my altar room today, and I always say... A clean altar is a happy altar. So I thought, you know what? Altar tours have been played out, you know, and you're probably rolling your third eye just going, oh my God, not another altar tour video. No, this is more of an altar tool video and about things that you would need for your altar, especially for beginners. Like they always ask, because I'm, I'm an admin and moderator to a bunch of witchy groups on Facebook. And one of them is called I Witches, and we have about 400,000 members, and it's just huge, and it's it's hard to manage, but get a lot of crazy questions, and a lot of them is, as I'm starting out, what do I need? So it's kind of geared towards that a little bit, and I'll just show you what I have, because it's amazing the stuff you can accumulate over the years. It's like when you buy a house, and you move in, and then you sell it, and you move out, and you don't realize how much shit you've accumulated over the years. It's like, where did all this stuff come from? Same thing. When you just when you start your practice, you're, you're going to get stuff and just accumulate stuff. And just, you know, you don't have to go start out like gangbusters. Just I'm going to show you some things, like maybe the five basic things you would need for your altar, at least what I think. So let me give you a tour real quick since I cleaned it up. Starting to my left over here, this is my Hecatean altar where I meditate, talk to her, and she yells at me and stuff like that. That's fun. This is just a medieval little photo studio set because we do a lot of photo shoots here at the castle. So that's that. And then on this side is just a collection of candle sconces and a fireplace that I did. Like I said, once again, it's a photo uh, studio thing. So, this is my altar. Once again, these are my servitors. And I'm not going to get super into them right now because I'm gonna, it's going to be like a series or less or whatever on uh, servitors, egregores, thought forms, stuff like that soon. Hopefully, I'm going to get a chance to do that. But, like I said, I have six. Rocky for prosperity. Medica for health. Anxi for uh, peace and harmony. Drago for protection, Sam for love, and Gothi for all my entertainment endeavors. So that's that. Now, this is my book collection, and I hope you can see it because of the glare. Uh, I have some in the other room as well, my in my den. But these are just some of the books that I have on hand. Good to have. This is my book of shadows collection. These were, believe it or not all in one thing and it was just falling out and just is horrible and so I like to categorize everything and I don't want to say it is or isn't important to have a book of shadows but it's good to have just to you could write down your progress and to me I call them recipe books because it's all spell work and stuff and I, when I need something I know where it's at I go to it and you know and if there's a spell I like, I'll tweak it and make it my own and put it in my collection. But Book of Shadows is, is good to have. So sorry, so you can write down your progress and watch yourself grow. Down here is just some gemstones, my little collection and stuff for stuff. Once again, and you can watch my correspondence videos on this and whatever. But you, before you start practicing or even getting into any kind of spell work, whatever... Know your correspondence, know the stuff that you need and, and that you need to use for whatever you're doing. And remember, there's a hundred different practices and paths to walk down. Some do things differently, some, you know, whatever. So it's all up to you. Just take your time and just know what you need to do. Next, just a couple candles up there. Some mortar and pestles, my insane incense collection. I love to have incense, everything. Of course, my candle collection. 
Uh, every color, once again, corresponding colors for whatever you're doing. Some candle holders. Now, I'm going to sit down for this. Okay. Here's some things what I consider super important to have on an altar. Okay. And I hope I don't forget anything, so bear with me. This... I use this for so much stuff, but mainly I use it a lot for uh, dressing candles. As you can see, I'm prepping something right now. But this is a good plate. So when you dress a candle, roll it in and stuff like that. So something good to dress candles in. If you don't have anything like that, wax paper works great. Get a sheet of wax paper, put it out. That works great too. Now... To crush your herbs, you need a mortar and pestle, mostly, or you could do it by hand on a plate, whatever. Now, like I said, some you can buy at the stores like this one, made out of ceramic or something. I don't know what this is, but it's small, but I, I never really use it because I use this one. This is 150 years old. It was handed down to me by my grandmother, who was a Catholic kitchen witch. And I was raised by her when I was like five years old. She used to make stuff, you know, food and breakfast and crush stuff in there and do her little incantation things or whatever and stuff like that for me. That's so mortar and pestle, or in Spanish we call it molcajete, dressing bowl, and a burn bowl, okay? This is ceramic, heat-resistant ceramic. I just found this in my kitchen. Now, because you want something safe, whether you're going to burn it, if you're going to burn a candle in it, uh, like bay leaves on fire, paper, whatever, petition, whatever you're burning, you need a safe place to do it. Don't burn yourself or your house down, please. So a, a burn bowl is good to have. Now, a burn bowl is different than a cauldron. This guy, look at how cute this is. Okay, this was white, obviously. I got from Michael's Art Supply for like 99 cents. I swear to God, they were clearing out all their Halloween shit. It was white. I painted it black, added a little uh, pentacle emblem, uh, emblem on there, just glued it on there. And I use this to burn if I'm doing anything that... Requires a charcoal tablet. Throw it in there. Do my thing. So, good to have, okay? Now remember, burn bowl, cauldron. Two different things. Now, what else? Ah. This... It may be, I don't know if it's a controversial subject. I really don't care what people, I don't know, you know. But a wand. This is mine. It's just a stick. It was from a branch that I was throwing in my fireplace and didn't want to be burned. He literally screamed at me and said, no, 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 no. I said, okay. So I'm using him as my wand. Okay, it's just... You know, the more natural, the better, to, I think. And now, and I do have one, it's pretty, that I got from Witch Casket by a subscription box, which is cool. But, you know, as you know, the wand is used for directing energy, casting circles, things like that. Good to have. So, not super important, maybe right away, but it's good to have on your altar. Next, okay, let's talk about herbs for a minute. As you can see, these are mine. And some you just get at the grocery store. You don't have to go nuts, okay? Some of these are so easy to get or whatever. And if not, just go to an herbal shop, a botanical or a apothecary or whatever is there. I don't know what you have, but yeah, Um and like I said, just start simple. Salt, oil, 
cloves, bay leaves. Bay leaves are super important, I think, for the first, for an herb to have or something to have right away is, is a bay leaf because you can write your intention on it, burn them. Super simple, effective, depending on you. It's good to have. Cinnamon sticks. Um, yeah, all this stuff. Now, I do subscribe or I have, or I got, I should say, I bought a company called Holy Santo. And it comes in this cool box with 20 packs of stuff. And on the back, it tells you what it is and what you use it for, what do you want, you know, it's, it's, it's properties and stuff like that. It's brilliant. I love this company. I, I highly suggest them. And once again, some other stuff that I got. Some Damiana that I haven't put away. Stuff like that. So herbs, good to have. And as well as oils. Now, oils, once again, know the difference between a carrier oil and an essential oil. Okay? Essential oil is like 100% pure. You really don't want to rub that on your skin. And you want to mix it with something to make it wearable or whatever if you do, which is a carrier oil, olive oil, something like that. Now, oils come in either pre-made. Ooh, sexual attraction. I should put that on. Okay. They come in pre-made stuff. Against enemies, money drawing, whatever it is. Some could, they, you know, or you get them in your basic flavors. This one is bergamot. Okay. So know your oils, you know, and once again, it's not, you don't have to go out and buy every single flavor. In time, you'll, it'll add up. Just, you know, just do your research. Know what you're doing before you start anything. And you'll know when you're ready. Um, as well as incense, like I got this big old bag of, uh, money drawing incense. Yeah, how huge that is, you know, um, and then what else? Okay. You know, this is not a, this is a, a me thing, you, but some spells you might require some trinkets or something to add to it to enhance it or whatever. This is my little trinket plate. Just stuff that I may use and mostly it's like for hexing because it's a lot of rusty nails, stuff like that. Now, moving on to the windowsill. Collection of glass jars. These are super cheap. This one and this one I got from Witch Casket in one of their boxes. Pretty cool. Put some moon water in that one, as you can see. And then I got these little ones for if I make jars for friends or whatever. Look at how cute these ones are. They're little tiny ones. Look at the cute. You can wear around your neck, put them in the rear view mirror, whatever. Stuff like that. Uh, this bowl with some sage in it, eagle feather, dragon's blood stick. Uh, what else? I think that's basically it. You know, like I said, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of stuff because I don't need a whole lot of stuff. And sometimes I just... If I'm doing a spell and I don't have something, then I'll go, I'll go get it for that. And then, of course, if you don't use it all, you have it left over. But once again, like I said, the, the basic things for an altar tool-wise is mortar and pestle, a candle dressing plate, a burn bowl, and or a cauldron. Okay, tool-wise, I think those are the most important things that you'll need. And then just go according. Like I said, once you have those, if you find a spell that you want to try, meditate on it, 
whatever, read up on it, go get your stuff and do it. Pretty simple. Um, you know, don't worry about having a million things on your altar when you're, you're starting out or whatever, because you don't, you really don't need it. Just take your time. Don't rush into it. Just, just do it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, but that's about it. And as well as, as candles, um, watch my previous video, Candle Magic. I talk about the types of candles and their colors and stuff like that. You know, I think I've got a video on herbs as well and stones and stuff like that. I don't know. Who knows? I got a video on everything. But watch those. Watch my, I did my recent video I did on effective spell casting, which is, yeah. And then I did one, I did another video not too long ago, a few months back for a lot of the young witchlings for newbies that are just getting into it. And I talk about a lot of this stuff as well. Um, but that's about it, you guys. I really just, like I said, I just wanted to touch base with you, let you know what's going on, which I'll tell you right now. Um, as you know, probably I talked about it in my last video. I... By trade or whatever, I am a carpenter and an artist. Um, and I retired, I was working for the government for the past 27 years, and retired about a year and a half ago due to the pandemic. Well, what do you do when you retire? And, like, I don't, and I refuse to sit around on my ass. So I like to hustle. I like to keep busy. And like I said, I've been an artist. And I make, I do, one of my businesses is where I refurbish old furniture. And I turn it like, you know, Victorian goth style, like really cool stuff. Um, and I'm about to launch another business called Coffins and Carriages, where I build coffins that are, coffee tables or bookcases and uh, like 18th century Victorian goth baby buggies. So that's another business. And then, but I have, it's just a bunch of friends for years have been telling me, it's like, dude, you're so talented with design and interior design and all this stuff because you should start your own show. And now that I have time, I am pitching my own show called American Gothic to HGTV. And we just got done filming one of the first episodes. And next week I'm going to be film, filming my uh, Sizzler reel, which is my in introduction reel, whatever. And we're going to get those edited and then hopefully sent off to HGTV by end of May. Open. And then if they pick it up, Please send me all your good juju and everything. If they pick it up, hopefully we'll have a debut premiere for October, just in time for uh, Halloween. That'd be awesome. Uh, but that's what I've been up to. That's why I've been a little absent on my channel. But I'm trying not to be because I really want to keep it going. Um, but that's about it, really, you guys. So I just want to have fun with this one and let you know, like, this is all you really need to get started and just, you know, and just grow from there. So that being said, remember, do no harm, take no shit. Love you guys. And I will talk to you soon. Keep an eye out. American Gothic on HGTV. Bye.